How's it going, Sean? Going great. How are you? Man, you're looking great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. The, the, the last time that uh, we done a podcast, we were talking about, you know, all the weight loss and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's good to see you keeping up with it, man, keeping the weight off. And you just you got that glow to you, man. <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're not showing. Yeah, you're not, right, showing. not yet. Uh, no, nah, man. Um, I just changed my lifestyle, man. And I try to adhere to, you know, and try to still eat the same way. You know, it's not a... Uh, it's not you don't eat a certain way for a while and lose this weight and then you go back to doing what you used to do. You yeah. You got to stick with the program and been doing pretty good with it, man. What 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 keeps you at it? You know, like do you have to talk to yourself? Do you tell yourself anything? Like what keeps you going? Uh, it's still struggle. Uh, I struggle on a, a daily. You know, uh, with food addiction. Yeah. Um. And I have triggers. Sweets are triggers of mine. I have a serious sweet tooth and. If I break over and if I end up having something that uh, can make my appetite increase or make me want more of it, and it kind of yeah. can, it can, you know, snowball effect. So uh, it's really true, though, what people say about doing something every day for weeks at a time, it becomes routine. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the key, man. That's been for me is just being in routine. Um, and yeah, making it a habit. And yeah. it's, a, it's a habit. And so I know now how to eat. I don't. I don't watch exactly down to the calories like I used to because mm-hmm. um, I used to watch every calorie I put in my body. But now I've done it long enough that I pretty much know what I'm what I'm putting in. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I reached my goal. And so I've just been trying to maintain. So I've been adding some things back into my diet. And I've put uh, I've put 10 pounds or so back on um, over the winter. I had no surgery, so I was kind of down for a little while. Um, and so – I just kind of figure out what I can eat and what I can. It's what's going to keep me where I want to be. Um, but it's just getting hmm. – it's just right here, man. Yeah, it's, man. Uh, and it's just doing the same thing, getting a habit, and eating the same way and just learning that it's 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 more about um, – uh, it's more about fuel than it is about entertainment, you know, because that's what we use it. Yeah. What we use food as is really it's not sustenance. It's, you know, it's, it's entertainment and – that's just me trying changing that way of thinking. Yeah, I, I see. I'm the same way. Like to me, it became almost an addiction because whenever I started eating a little bit healthier, I started feeling so much better. Mm-hmm. And I would notice that whenever I would pig out, you know, on a big large pizza or something like that, a few hours later, I would just feel like crap, mm-hmm. and I hated that feeling. But whenever you know, I was eating healthy, the lean meats, protein, stuff like that, it just gave me this great energy. And I got addicted to that. I wanted Mm -hmm. to feel that way all the time. And also the uh, habitual aspect that we were talking about, uh, one of my buddies the other day, he looked up my water jug, that mean you were talking about before we hopped on air. And he said, how can you drink water every day? And I just... I started thinking about that. And then it hit me like, well, I don't drink anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, and after so long, if that's all you're drinking, it just becomes that habit, you know. I still have the sweet tea every once in a while. Yeah, I, I, I like my sweet tea. I, I like uh, those um, uh, diet green teas. Yeah, the, 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 them are the bomb. I really like those because I like uh, um, where I don't eat a lot of sweets. I don't really yeah. I hardly eat any um, to to curb that constant sweet craving that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'll give myself sweet drinks. You know, yeah. some diet stuff. You know, I'll drink a diet lip, like I said, a diet green tea. Um, I drink a lot of water, but I'll get those um, low calorie or no sugar packets, things like that, to put yeah. in fl- water flavoring. You know, um, and that's kind of like. Oddly enough, it's kind of like a treat to me, you know, and it just yeah. and I, that way I'll even drink more water whenever I've got a big jug like that. And I, it, but I can't imagine. To me, it's it's really alien for somebody to say that they don't drink water. It blows my mind. I don't I, see how they survive. I don't to be either. honest, because like I mean, you have to like you have to have so much water every single week, like every day, really. So I don't see how how that's going for them. I, it really. It blows really, my mind. Really unhealthy to never drink water. You know, I mean, people get they're, they're getting their liquid intake, you know, and they're 
in their soda and and their other things that they're drinking. But yeah. I don't know, man. That's just so it, weird. It, it to me. blows my mind. But everybody, you know, people are surviving. So yeah. what am I to say? I mean, if if you enjoy kidney stones, then more power <laughs> exactly, to you. you exactly. Dude, the very first time I had a kidney stone, I stopped drinking pop for like three years I because I was thing. like, no, I never want that to happen again. I did the same thing. I had I've only had two. Um, and both times was was the most excruciating thing yeah. that I've ever ever encountered. And Dude, I've broken bones. I've busted my head open with concussions. Still, so, so nothing I. comes close to a kidney stone. Mm-hmm. It is crazy. I think that that's like for us dudes that that's the closest that will ever come to fill in the pain of giving birth. That's always what I've and what ladies, I've heard of. if that's true. Yeah. Yes. Oh my yes. goodness. Thank you for all that you endured. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for us being here. Exactly. Thank you for life in general. Oh my God. That is. It's. And you know it too. Like there's no like. I think I have one. No. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. It is wild. Yeah. Um. It's uh, something I hope I never experience again. That's why I drink as yeah. much water as I do, and I don't drink any. I don't drink any pop anymore. Yeah, well, I don't think that this is true because I looked into it a year, a few years later. But whenever I picked back up pop, it was Mountain Dew because that was always my go-to. Oh, and mine too. I love it, especially the uh, Code Red and the 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 blue. Was it Voltage? I think that was the name of it. Mm-hmm. So, so good. But now, uh, whenever whenever I picked it back up, one of my buddies said like a pop equals a pound a day, and I don't think that that's true but at the time like that hit me so much i was like man if i'm drinking like three pops a day that's three pounds that i'm gaining and i like i said i don't think that that's true but that's what got me to quit pop entirely oh you'll definitely lose weight if you stop drinking especially regular you can you'll still lose weight even if you're drinking diet because diet pop will still put put it on you um, a little bit but not nearly as bad as if you're drinking the regular stuff but uh I always oh, heard it causes cancer. You ever heard that rumor? The diet pop causes? I don't know if that's true. Uh, no, it's all, it's, um, Dang I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of research on the, uh, because of the, the uh, sweeteners that they use. Is that, is that what you're I like? think that that was the reason that I just, I, I, I seen it on the internet. I, I did a lot of research <laughs> and there's actually, there's no science to back it up that it actually, the, the re, the, what I found through my extensive research on i sound like i did a thesis on it or something i've got a doctor in it but <laughs> but i did I, I do do that i like to research stuff and um there was a study that said um they had give given some mice in a lab like an extreme amount of sweeteners artificial sweeteners and they did get cancer but the amount of sweetener that they gave those mice would have equaled like drinking, I believe it was like 600 sodas Whoa. a day. Wow. So, oh, so somebody took that that logic and then they took just that logic and said, said, well, this causes cancer. Yeah. Well, okay. It, but what human is going to drink like 600 diet sodas a day? I mean, so. Yeah. That's where that basically, that's where that came from. You get a lot of that in science. Exactly. Man, I, so I think that it's also different for different people. And if you really look into it, I mean, everything that you eat nowadays, there's going to be some type of side effect. I just don't think that you can really get, besides water, I guess. And even then, like I've, people, if you drink you, too much water every day, like that can do it, some damage to you. I just don't, I just think that you have to find what works. And what is the least bad on your body? I guess that's what I'm trying Bas- to say. Basically, everything. God choose your evils. Well, everything in our in our system in our society that we use is honestly pretty much all of it is in a sense bad for you. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Said all a lot of it better is. than I did. No, it is everything. Everything we eat is processed, and it's all has preservatives and chemicals and things like that yeah. that are not designed for you to consume as much as we consume of it yeah exactly. it's designed to keep the food long last longer on shelves so you can preserve it but it's not it wasn't meant for you to eat every single day 
of your life. Yeah. So that's where the issues comes in. And the same way with the, the liquids in the drink and, and the water we drink, you know, and the water that's used in the drinks that the people that don't drink water, but they still drink, you know, yeah. they still drink pop. They still drink other things that, yeah. you know, that is contaminated as well. But, you know, like everything is going to kill you. Some stuff will kill you lesser than others. So you just got to choose, like we said, the lesser of the two evils. Back in the day, man, I, I guess that's why folks lived so long, was you were growing everything yourself. Mm-hmm. You had your own garden. You know, you were killing your own meat, you know, butchering it yourself. You didn't uh, have a sedentary lifestyle. Exactly. We're, I mean. You were producers. Now we're a society of consumers. Yeah. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. good. That's mm-hmm. good. You hit the nail on the head, man. But but the way things are going nowadays, we may be getting back to that lifestyle for too long. Who knows? Folks need to learn how to hunt for themselves mm-hmm. and grow for themselves. Absolutely. Because times are getting rough. I mean, you know, that's with everything that's going on nowadays with inflation and the price of everything. That's why, like, don't get me wrong. I feel sorry for the people that are having a hard time. And heck, even I'm struggling with certain things. But that I'm not as worried as some people because I was lucky enough to have a dad that knew mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And he kind of taught me a lot of those lessons in farming and gardening and hunting mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Man, I, I, whenever I was a kid, I just thought that, you know, that was the way of life. Mm-hmm. But exactly. now that I'm older, I know just how important those lessons are, especially with everything going on nowadays. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. You need to be self-sustainable. Yeah. And none of us are, but we need to know how to be if the time arises. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's something that it's the that adage uh how exactly does it go? Um give a give, give a, a man give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but teach, teach a man to fish, fish and he'll eat yeah. for a lifetime. You yeah, know, man. That's it, it's true. Yeah. Very true. Speaking about like, like how everything's different nowadays, I know you've been doing a lot of shows and stuff. Does it seem like like people are appreciating, you know, live entertainment? more than before everything that happened, you know? Because that's kind of the sense that I'm feeling with some of the concerts that I've been going to here lately. Like, people just have this different appreciation for live entertainment now because we it was almost taken away from us mm-hmm. forever. Do you kind of get that at your shows? I do get a sense of that. Uh, I, I do. And I've seen it in, in, at my shows and the shows that, that I've uh, that I've went to that, yeah, there's uh, there's a good amount of support. Yeah, people are coming out, um, enjoying themselves, and um, yeah, I, I I think the world, the, or the, at least the true music lovers, found a new uh, a newfound respect for for the art and for yeah. the artists that do it. I think so, man. You know, it was it got scary there for a little while with the Save Our Stages Act and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Man, like it just. <sighs> Now that I look back at the first, like the last few concerts I went to, right before everything hit, like it just, that was a different sense that I, I know that one day we're going to get that back. But man, it just, we were really taking that for granted. Mm-hmm. Being in an arena with 20, 50,000 people, you know, like, man, we took so much for granted. And I'm so glad that live entertainment is coming back because, man, it made it made me realize at least that just how important music and comedy and all these mm-hmm. entertainment arts are just for our headspace. Yeah, man. You know, just our mental well mental being. Health. And mental well being, exactly, dude. That's what uh, that's what art does for people. Yes. You know, that's that's it just makes you not think about your problems for a, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and also it brings everybody together. And exactly, that like, too. Like I, thinking about those concerts with 20,000 people, you know, that was 20,000 people that had totally different opinions, totally different backgrounds and beliefs and skin color, like everybody in a melting pot that was all there for the same reason. Mm-hmm. That with every with all this uncommon stuff in their life, they found that one thing that they have in common, and they all enjoyed it together. Mm-hmm. Man, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, 
music's a universal language, man, and and art in general, and and comedy is universal. Yeah. You know, not everybody finds it finds the same thing to be. They don't get the same thing out of it, but you understand it, you yeah. appreciate it, and that's why it's important to keep it around, man. Yeah, man. And I'm I'm just so glad that everything's getting back going. I've seen you uh, booking a lot of shows here, man, especially in the festivals. Now that the festivals are coming back, man, that makes me so happy. Oh, that's my favorite things to do. Is, yeah, is dude. The festivals. There, I mean, to anybody that's never been to a festival but you've been to a concert, it is two totally different experiences. Very, very different. Um, I mean, they're both great, but uh, festivals are just. Especially the smaller ones, the ones that are not uh, huge corporate festivals, those are fine too. You yeah. know, don't get me wrong, but the smaller festivals, um, it's very community and and it's a family oriented type situation, you know. And it's just, especially in the Kentucky music scene, uh, there's not a lot of uh, animosity. There's a lot of support amongst the artists, and so we usually. It's like a, it's a great time for us to get yeah. together and hang out whenever, because we ordinarily we don't, you know, everybody yeah. are trying to do their own thing and trying to play their music and support themselves and play their own shows. And when you get on a festival and you've got all these other bands that you're friends with, it's great for us just to get to be there and hang out with each other and yeah. spend a lot of time with each other because you don't otherwise get to. Um, but then all the, all the fans have all become on the most part that 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 kind of follow us all around you know they become family to us and so yeah. it's just like a great big it's it's like a great big family reunion you know really is what those it, it's just lasts all day and usually you've got the music you've got the camaraderie you've got you know you, you've got all sorts of things going on with uh with food booths and food trucks and uh, artists and vendors and all this stuff just it just turns into this little community that pops up for a few days and it's just uh it's i've had some of the best times i've ever had in my life at, at yeah. festivals you know um, it's beautiful man. it is it, it really is. is i tell people like it's more of an experience mm-hmm. than Absolutely. a show like the type of you're out there most of the time it's, it's in the wilderness you know you're having a camp you enjoy nature a little bit. You're enjoying art because not only do you get art, but you have amazing artists that have booths up and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Some of the best food on the planet is on the food trucks at these festivals. Oh, it's so good, man. And so many other festivals are popping up around here, too. It used to be like you'd have to drive you know, out of state to go to some of these great festivals, even with local artists. But a big shout out to all the people that are getting things going, you know, like, like Manchester, all the stuff that Tim is doing out there and mm-hmm. all, all the stuff that uh, Jessica's doing. And, you know, it's great people are doing some really great things whenever it comes with local music and also, you know, bringing in this uh, regional talent as well as national talent, too. There's great festivals happening this summer. They're, they are. They're popping I'm up I'm losing all track the of them. Like, there's so <laughs> I many. I know. Um, but, you know, I'm just like, bring it on, you know, um, the more the merrier. We we need places to play. We we want to get together. We want to. We love having a good time. I, I, I do as a artist and as a you know as 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 a just a fan of yeah. other people's music too. So uh, and why not? I mean, this area has tons of talent, um, and why not showcase it? We've got a beautiful beautiful uh, environment, beautiful scenery, uh, and. For such a sparsely populated area, we have the a huge concentration of talent. So we need to promote it. Yeah, and, man. and what better way than to put on festivals? So, I, I mean, I'm I'm just ecstatic about the fact that all these places are popping up and these and these in these little towns that are, you know, places I've never had never been. You know, like in Manchester and and uh, Middlesbrough and. Uh, places like that, you know, yeah. Sl- Slade has a festival of the red. You know, I mean, yeah, it's just man. these little places are popping up with these festivals, and a lot of people otherwise would never go, and they get to see these little towns, and it's just a good. It's just all around good yeah. for everybody. I've been wanting to go to that festival of the red, man. That that's they seem like they knock it out of the park every year. But sp- speaking about festivals, and somebody that you and I are very good friends with, where is it at? 
staying at Jimbo. What is the festival that Jimbo Valentine always does the artworks for? Is it Fallsburg? That was it. Yeah. Fallsburg. Man. I, not only do I love that festival, but I also love their posters every single time because Jimbo knocks it out of the park, man. Jimbo's it, a he's a magician. It's <laughs> unreal. Like I mean, speaking about Jimbo, let me get all these dang messages off of here. He's my artwork for my phone, mm-hmm. and yet he knocks it out of the park every single he time. He did the man. artwork for my new for my single that just uh, for, just come out. Um, as soon as I seen it, I knew. Jimbo. Yeah, you know, you know his work. It's very, it, it, it's very unique, um, and his process. I love about his process when he does um, does anything for me. Like I send him, for, for example, this single that I had him do the artwork for. I send him um, the music, and I send him the lyrics, and I give him, as most people do, I give him free reign. Yeah, uh, and what Jimbo will do, he'll Sit and listen to the listen to the song, read the lyrics, and listen to it over and over, and he just kind of gets it in his head and what's it what's it make him what's he get out of it, yeah. and then he just puts that on the you know onto the screen, and, and usually what he comes up with is pretty great. Yeah, man. I, I want to ask him if anybody like ever says no that's not what i was wanting because i'd say he never gets that he he, he probably hits the nail on the head every single time i think so it's so good yeah it man in time and space too man that's a great song too like so like what's it about though like to you like what were what was going through your head whenever you wrote this song because Um, man the lyrics are wild uh man it's really just kind of reflecting you know i wrote that during this whole covid period and um it was just kind of you know reflecting and what on my surroundings and what's going on in the world Mm -hmm. um and it's really kind of just like what we're what we're all doing it wasn't really about me um there was Sure, there's some truth in it, or there's some parts in it that about me or how I feel, but it was in general like what we're all doing yeah. is the the main, the basically the course of it is we're taking the, taking it day by day till I figure out another way, figure out a better way. I mean, and that's just kind of my motto, and yeah. but I feel like that's what we're all doing, and what we need to do is just. You know, take life one day at a time. Live in the now. Live in the present. Yeah. And do the best you can until you figure out a better way to do it. You know. Yeah. So that's just kind of. I'm just basically the 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 gist of the song was me just making observations. You know, is yeah. really what it what it is. But that's the thing that I like about your music, man. Is like the lyrics are very deep very uh, observational because like people can kind of find their own thing with it like it, it may be a specific thing for you but if 10 different people listen to it you're going to have 10 different opinions that is the and way i, I love write. that type of art man because that, it, that makes it for everybody it's abs- it's kind of it's abstract in a way um you know and some people are are they they pride themselves on being painting a very specific picture um you know, and their storytelling and things like that, and which is great. Um, and I don't often do it that way, but my stuff. That's why I do my stuff. Is like it's kind of a broader, it's a broader scope. Um, yeah. And I like for people to get what they get out of it. You know, you know, most of sometimes I write more in a direct manner about a specific topic, but other times songs like that, it's uh, it's observations, and and people can kind of, like you said, they can conclude what they want from it. Yeah. Um, and I'm usually I'm honestly I I'm more about uh, it's all encompassing, but well, sometimes I'm focusing more on the the melody on the delivery than yeah. actually than what I'm saying. You know, uh, it it just varies depending on song to song. I, I'm just I never know what's I just write what comes out. You know, yeah, I, man. I I just try to be you know true to to my art. Yeah. Are are you one of those people where it just like it comes out of nowhere almost? Most of the it's time, it's yeah. it's like it's from like almost like an alien. A whole is lot. beaming it down <clears throat> to you. It's, almost every it's time. Weird. 
almost every time that I because I don't write a whole lot. Usually I do like I have ideas, you know, I, I often will sit down with guitar and we'll just noodle around and I'll come up with cool riffs and things like that. And I'll record them on my phone while I'm listening to it. That way I've got it. Don't, and then I will start, then I'll put stuff together um, and a melody will come to me and things like that. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. And then when, usually I write an album at a time is basically the way I do it. Yeah. You know, I have ideas and then when it comes, all right, I'm going to put an album together and then I'll start taking these ideas and I'll, and then I'll finish them all. Okay. You know, I've got tons of songs, partial songs laying around. But yeah. then when it's time that I'm ready, I need to put out an album. Then that's whenever I sit down and I really focus. And a lot of times, the, the especially the lyrics, I don't know where they come from. I really sometimes it's just just like that stuff will come out in just a yeah. few minutes. And it's really amazing when that happens. When something decent, when I feel like a decent song comes out, yeah. nowhere. It's hard to explain, and it's a great feeling. But it's it's a great, really good feeling whenever I get done with something in just a few minutes, and I go, I, I don't think that's pretty good. Where where'd that come from? You know, it's yeah. Like, but I feel like that really. There's a maybe like there's a. It's very hypothetical and very deep, but you know, it's just like a constant stream. You know, there's energy and there's energy flowing around, and so there's music flowing yeah. around in a way. It's just like, and I've heard other people say this. It's kind of like you. You're lucky enough sometimes to pluck something out of that, out of that jet stream of of ideas flowing around. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't know. It, See, man, I feel the same way, and I hope that one day somehow, maybe it probably thousands of years from now, that science will be able to catch up and explain that, because <laughs> every artist that I've ever talked to, even you know. I've watched interviews, like even Michael Jackson was talking about that one time, how these ideas just come out of nowhere, and it's unexplainable. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you can sit there and, and make a song, but whenever it just comes to you and you knock out an entire song or an entire comedy act or you paint a picture in just mere minutes, and it's amazing, and not just to you, but to other people, yeah. it's, it's unexplainable. It's like you said, you know, it's like a stream yeah, of consciousness that you're able to plug into. Cause some, cause, and when weird. I try too hard, it's magic. It's it, sometimes you know when you try. When I try to do something, usually I don't like it nearly as well. Yeah. When I try, make myself sit down and try to write. Like I need to write a song, and I sit down and try and force myself to do it. I'm forcing it, think overthinking it, and yeah. I usually don't like what I end up doing when I get done with it. And so for me, I just kind of have to sit back. And allow it to happen. Yeah. And then, like, after I'm done with it, sit back and go, you know, do I like it or not? Or, I, you know, or is, yeah, I don't, that's, that's okay, you know? Yeah. It, it, everybody's different, though. Some people, I respect people that can sit down and just be like, I'm going, some people can do that. Some people are like, I'm just going to sit down and write a song, and they will sit down and they will write something amazing. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's, that's, an art there, and that's uh, something that not everybody has. And I, yeah. But, yeah, man. Um, it's weird, man. It, it really is. is. The, the thing I like about your music, like, yeah, like the lyrics are deep, you know, and, and uh, it has a lot of meaning to it, but also the music that you put to it, like Time and Space, it's badass, man. Like, it's, it's, got, it's got some great riffs, and it's just something that, like, you just want to drink and drink to it in a bar and 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 and, and, and you know I just you want to drive like a badass. You want to drive in your car too. Yeah, you know, not not just any car, but like you want like a fast. Firebird, you know, <laughs> like a, a real car, you know. Uh, but, it, but it's how did you develop that style, man? Because I, like I've noticed that like you kind of kept with that kind of bluesy rock style. I guess what would you? How yeah, would you I'm describe blues, it? That's blues rock, you know, basically. Um, I, I think that came from growing up. Some of my my favorite memories as a young child. My mother and I used to just drive around, um, listen to the listen to the radio, listen to the cassette player. You know, <clears throat> drive around Dewey Lake. You know, drive around the back roads and stuff. I loved it with the windows down, sunny day out. Yeah. Then when I got older and I got got my license and things like that, and I would do it my, and get my friends together, and we would just drive around, and you know, often and oftentimes doing things I shouldn't be doing while I'm driving. 
but we'll say that for another podcast. <laughs> but some of my best memories are in a car, yeah, man. and and just jamming and listening to great songs, and so that just kind of was ingrained in my in my brain, and I love music like that. And I love music that you can drive to and listen to. And so I've just kind of – I want – and the one thing that I've learned, um, and I've some of the – you know, like Billy Gibbons, uh, he said yeah. it one time, and I'm a huge ZZ Top fan, as you can probably tell through my, from my music, is that the most important thing a person should do and the best piece of advice is to write music that you would want to listen to, that you would mm. like. Yeah. And – so and I've stuck with that, and so I write music that that I would want to listen to. Yeah, you know, and that's the kind of stuff that I typically do listen to is, you know, is classic rock or bluesy rock or, you know, but the '90s stuff, the '90s greats, you know, I, yeah. all that influenced me a whole lot, and that stuff I typically listen to that kind of keeps me in uh, in a good mood. You yeah. know, I'm one of those people that I music affects me very very intimately uh and it can affect my mood very easily yeah so i listen to certain style of music all the time i you know and just to keep me where i need to be and so that's kind of where the music that i write leans to and i just i love rock and roll man and i love the blues and I, i love to perform it live so that's just my thing, and I mean, I saw. I figure, you know, I might as well, I might as well stick with it and roll with it. Yeah, man. Because, like, see, to me, like, that's that is rock and roll. Whenever you hear that blues element, because that's that's where rock and roll came from. If yep. it wasn't for the blues, you would never have rock and roll. And for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, go listen to "Old Boom Boom" by John Lee Hooker. I mean, man, that like you hear a song like that yeah, that was recorded great, in 1960. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it, it sounds like a lot of the stuff that you hear today, you know. And I think you would, man, you need to cover that song. You would kill Boom Boom. I'd I like love to, that song. I'd like to hear you do Boom Boom. I, I do some old, some old standards, some old. Uh, I pull stuff like that every now and then. Um, ZZ, ZZ Top covered that, didn't they? If they didn't, man, they should have, because oh, they would have sounded great. A boom, 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 boom. Oh, I love that song. Ha, 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 ha. (laughs) Man. Oh, it's so good, man. I I just love the emotion in it, though. That's where blues gets me is the the emotion and the feeling um, that it comes from. It doesn't. It comes from deep within. Yeah. For me, it comes from your heart, from your soul, and 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 from how you're feeling. It's not just. uh, It's not just here, and it's not just you're performing. It's you're you're. You're bringing, you're bringing what, what you felt and you've brought. You're bringing your your past experiences out, and that's kind of how I look at look at it. Is whenever I'm performing, is I'm, I'm not just performing in that moment. I'm performing from all the other from the, my whole life. You know, yeah. that sounds cliche, but you know, I'm bringing all of that with yeah. me and try to get. It's like it's a release, um, and. And I really, we to, to get morbid, we don't know how long we have. Yeah. And music is my favorite thing to do. And so it's like every time I play, I'm going. I try to play like it's the last time that I I may play. Mm-hmm. That's deep, man. I like it though. I like you don't, it. You don't, Everybody needs that mindset though. Well, you because we don't know. We don't know how much, how many more times. You know, and I'm getting to do something I love, so I'm going to give it all I got while I'm yeah. while I'm up there. You know. You can tell when an artist is comfortable, too comfortable, and they're not appreciating what they're getting to do on that stage. Mm-hmm. It's just I go out here and play the hits, you know. Mm-hmm. But you can tell the artists that. Or has that mindset like you have that like, hey, I'm going to put on a show because this might be my last show. That's it, man. It's important. It it's is very important. It's very important and to have a good. So have a good time. Yeah. Don't get too caught up in all the BS. Yeah. Um, and just the most important thing to do is get up there and have fun. Yeah. And um, so if you can get up there and have fun and be good at what you do and and, and enjoying what you do and then 
you know, it can't be much better yeah. than that, man. Y'all are also so lucky to have that gift, too. Because not everybody, like, I, right. I think that everybody has some type of artistic ability if mm-hmm. they are willing to go find it, but it's different for everybody. You know, there's some people that have that music gene that can rock a stage, and there's some people that unfortunately don't. I'm one of those people. But like to see somebody like you that's you know, tearing it up on a stage, like, man, that's such a cool ability that somebody like you is so lucky to have because I mean, there's not many people that well, were born with that. I know that, and I'm very thankful that, that I have uh, that I have some talent, and that I'm definitely don't want to waste it, and that's why I insist on using it as much as I can, um, and not um, you know not giving up on on what I love, you know, or and not giving up on a you know it's not a you know it's not it's a, not really a dream because I'm making it, it's happening. Yeah. You know, um, so I'm able to do this, and I love to do it. So I don't see any use in in spending my life, um, you know, not doing it and being unhappy doing yeah. something else for somebody else. You know, yeah. Because uh, back to we don't know we don't know how much long we have on this planet, so we need to enjoy it. Yeah, and you only get one. Yeah, man. Enjoy it. Even if there is something after this, here on this earth, you only get one life here. Yeah. So enjoy it. Hope somebody got something out of that right there. But man, thank you for all the good music, especially for Time and Space. I've been loving that tune, man. What do you have uh, coming up in 2022? What are um, you working on? Yeah, well, I've got... Um, I'm going to be releasing some more singles. I'm going to release some... Uh, I'm going to release at least release at least three. So I'm going to put another one out um, the first of May. Put another one out the first of July. Um, then, as plan if plans go uh, as they should, be releasing a full album uh, late August or early first September. Nice. Um, I've got. Uh, I'll be having more videos. Me and my me and my great friends at uh, Fat Cave Studios. Um, Big shout to those guys. They're yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. Those are some of my best friends now uh, and great guys to work with. And we've been uh, staying busy. Um, and uh, so we've got some more. We're putting out more videos with the singles, um, doing all kinds of stuff. we got we got all kinds of stuff cooking up. But uh, I've got some festivals. Uh, um, just to throw some things out real quick, uh, April 2nd, I'll be at the uh, uh, Laurel County Public Library. They do live shows there. Yeah, and they do a great job, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been loving watching those. All for free, too. Well, at yeah. least on YouTube, uh, Facebook. I've no, been watching them all there. They're, they're free to attend. Uh, I'll have the band there on April 2nd, so we'll be doing a full band show, um, and it's, it's a free show. Um, I'll be I'll be playing in Moorhead again, I think April 9th at the venue. Um, I've got... Um, Oh, shoot, I can't think of all my schedule. But I've got a couple of festivals lined up. I've got, uh, of course, Festival of the Red in June. Um, I've got uh, a couple things in May, uh, Fallsburg Summer Stage. Yes, so sir. I've got to, but you can find all that, you know, on the on the normal places, Facebook and Instagram. I even right. got, I'm, I'm even doing TikTok now. I jumped on the TikTok, on the, on the TikTok. I've been trade. following you on there, man. Um, Good stuff. But, uh yeah, keep up with me at uh, if SeanWhiting.com. That's S-E-A-N-W-H-I-T-I-N-G.com. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm just going to try to stay busy and and uh, be where I need to be. Sean, you're an inspiration. You're an incredible musician. You're a badass dude. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate you, man. <laughs>